Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if this is your first time visiting my channel, welcome. I'm Christine. I love doing home and garden projects with you on here. And when it comes to home and garden, I like to bring nature inside the house and blend the two together. So bringing plants inside, natural earthy textures, um, that's kind of, kind of the direction we've gone. But in today's video, we're going to be doing an unboxing. So we do have some organizing to do. That will be in a separate video though, but I'm filming multiple videos today because I've got a lot to catch up on with you guys. So, all right, we're going to be opening up this international package. So I ordered this from Equigenera or Equigenera, Equigenera. Anyway, I'll post their website below. So I've watched other people do their unboxings from Equigenera and it is a little bit hit or miss. So I'm curious to see how these plants, uh, how they made it, how, how everything fared. Uh, so I will give you guys the rundown of how at least this order made it. I ordered on their main website, which is equigenera.com. Uh, they also have a U.S. location or a U.S. site you can order from. Um, they are also in Florida, but they didn't have much of a selection last time I visited their U.S. site. And so I just ordered directly from their Ecuador site. So twice a month, they export plants and so they'll do two shipments a month and export plants into the US and I I don't know how it works for the UK I know they have multiple locations so but I know they have a place in Florida and so they export it go the plants that come into the US go to Florida and then they ship out from their Florida location so that is what my package went through so I did pay for express mail at least from Florida so once my plants got there um, they shipped out yesterday yeah, yesterday and it just got here this morning. So it was pretty fast shipping for the post office um, being there in the So these plants that I have here, I have, I think four, 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 yeah, four, I'm pretty sure I only ordered four. And uh, I don't, I don't spend a lot on plants. I, you know, like $50 is kind of like my max for plants. So just so you guys know, I don't have like super, I don't have like $100 plants in here. They, they are uh, uncommon plants. I wouldn't say rare, but definitely uncommon, especially for our area here in Tucson. And so I'm pretty excited to see how these turn out. I'm a little bit nervous too. Okay, so we've got the packing slip. Um, oh yeah, so okay, I did have five. So it appears to be packed really well. Let's see. Get some of the paper out here. All right. So I do like that the plants go to Florida first because that way they can kind of, you know, check them out, you know, make sure that they are alive after shipping from overseas, you know, exporting. So I'm hoping that these are gonna be okay. I know it's winter time. It was probably a little risky to order during winter time. But I mean, it's nice here. We're, we're like in the seventies down here, but I don't know where, you know, between Florida and here, I'm not sure what's going on with the weather. Okay, so that's everything in there. Okay, yeah, so they are in these paper bags. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, this thing, this leaf, this beautiful leaf was just like looking at me as I peeked in. It's so beautiful. Okay, okay. Hold on, sorry. I got, get, I get like a little bit overly excited when it comes to my plants. I can't help it though. It's gorgeous. Okay, so first what I'll do is I'll go through each one, take it out, and then I'm gonna leave them bagged up for now. So they're bagged up in sphagnum moss, which is, it actually looks like it's probably the perfect dampness. Like it's, it's humid in there. I can see in the baggie, but it's not, uh, it's not like soaked or anything. So that's good because we don't want any root rot, but this looks really good. So that is philodendron mammae or mame, mame, mame. And it's got a new leaf baby, a new little uh, baby bump on this leaf here. Oh yes. Okay. That is beautiful. So I'm not sure what kind of B roll I'm going to get for you guys. So I'm just going to hold them up. Oh wait. Here, let me hold them up in front of me so I can try to make sure it's in focus for you guys. You can see. And also, as far as like the size goes, that's, I'm pretty happy with that size. Yeah, that's, that's pretty nice. I didn't know how big they were going to be because they don't have, you know, descriptions like what, um, you know, they're not sold in pots or anything. So I didn't know exactly how it was going to be size wise. That's a really nice size. It's like a, a tween, you know, it's not a baby baby. I'll just tell you guys what these are as I pull them out of the bag, so I won't tell you yet. Okay. Oh, look at that. Okay, let's take a look at these leaves. So this is Philodendron pastazanum. Oh, man. 
in. Okay. Oh, it's gonna have really pretty leaves. Yeah, you can already see there's a bit of pillowiness to the leaves. I'm really looking forward to growing this one. I'm super stoked that it's got this little baby here, that little baby leaves, so that will be awesome. Oh, that looks like a big leaf there. Philodendron plowmanii. Oh my gosh. Okay, that is seriously much bigger than what I expected. <laughs> Look at the size of that leaf. Holy cow, that is gorgeous. Okay, let me hold that one up so you guys can see. Look at that leaf, holy cow. It does have this newer leaf here. That one's a little more crinkled, but I don't see any like cracks or anything. So I think that'll fill out and unwrinkle just fine once it gets hydrated and gets to get situated, but wow. Okay, that is awesome. So that is the Philodendron Plamanii. Okay, let's open the Monstera. And I'll tell you what kind of Monstera this is in just a minute. Oh, I hope it made it. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be awesome. Oh, I love the look of these so much. Oh man, it's even cooler in person. This is the Monstera subpinata. Look at that. Oh yes, that is gonna be awesome. And it's got a new leaf. Oh, it looks perfect too. I hope, I hope that it makes it okay. But it's really expensive. I've noticed like on Etsy, they're definitely like it was, is it like a couple hundred dollars or something on it? I can't remember that. Anyway, the last time I looked at it, I was just like, oh, that, okay, that's not going to be happening anytime soon. Um, but yeah, this one was $30, so just to give you an idea. Look at the shape, though. It's so exotic, and you know, they, they remind me of like palm fronds or something, the shapes of the leaves, but I just love that so much. I think it's so interesting. It's so different. Ah, yes. Okay, so my little monsters can get acquainted later on. And this is the Anthurium. Okay, I'm not peeking. I'm gonna show you guys at the same time as I see it. Ah! Sorry, did I just scream into my microphone? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, this is a crystallinum. Crystallinum, crystallinum. I say crystallinum, but either way. Oh my gosh, look at those velvety leaves. Holy cow. Super awesome. Okay, that one is super cool. Wow. So I placed this order in January, about, let's see, about mid January, and now it's uh, February 10th today. Uh, so when I placed this order, I had decided on several plants that I was going to be selling. Um, so I did already sell all those off just because I don't want, I don't want my collection to be like too crazy, you know, with plants. Like I want it to be really curated and, you know, each, each plant I have in my collection, I want it to be something I really, really love and really in, get a lot of joy out of growing, you know. Okay, so I'm going to bring you guys in a little bit closer and we're going to get checking out these roots because that's really where the health of the plant lies, is all in the roots. and we're gonna start with the Monstera subpanata. I really want to see this one's root system. Oh yeah, the moss looks really good. Oh, if you heard that, that was Michael texting just now. So that one has a small root system. I mean, it is a small plant, so I wouldn't expect it to be too big, but it is all healthy, all white. It even has some green, some very live green roots there. Um, so it's all nice and firm, white, healthy, and it's looking good. So what I'm gonna do with these as I'm unpacking them, I'm gonna go grab a, a jar of water and I'm gonna be placing these into the water so they can start rehabbing and start uh, plumping up there. I'm gonna go grab another jar too, but for now I'm just gonna stick this one in there like that. Okay, now let's unpack this philodendron mame. This is actually really exciting. I love getting plants online. You get things that you can't find in your area, right? It's fun, it's kind of exciting. You don't know exactly what your plant is gonna look like, you know, and how big it's gonna be. You, you have a general idea, right, when you're ordering, but you really don't know until it arrives. All right, so that looks pretty good. There is one root here that I think is 
Yeah, it just looks like it's kind of just desiccated. It doesn't look like it's rot or anything. It just looks like it's dried up. So I just pluck that one off. All right, Philodendron Plamenii. Let's check out this one. see the roots already and the moss they did such a good job with because it's not too damp it's like lightly it's like ever so lightly damp just enough to keep some uh, slight moisture on the roots just enough to keep them from drying out really whoa what whoa okay holy cow look at that chunk okay I was seriously not expecting to find a giant chunk like this in here <laughs> That is crazy how fat the stems get, you know, the, the stolen. Okay, I'm just checking the whole situation here and just making sure there's nothing soft here. The stolen is all pretty solid, this large chunk here. That is, I mean, there's no soft spots on it. It's just, it naturally will darken when it's underneath the soil like that. So the part of the plant that's up here, it is starting to put out new roots here. So it is putting out like a secondary set of roots here, aside from the stolen down here. I think it'll probably put out some more roots right up there too. So I'm gonna plop this into its water and let that rehab in there. And I'm gonna have to get some more water here, hold on. All right, let's see how this philodendron pasta xanum is. Hmm, what have we got here? Okay, I see all those brown roots. We do have some white ones here, but we're gonna have to do some surgery on these, see that? So we're just gonna Pluck that right away. Um, that is, ooh, yeah, that one is not looking good. Yeah, this one's gonna have to start some new roots. I'm actually gonna set this one aside for now. Oh, we're gonna have to do a little surgery on that one, but let's grab this one and just see how this one's roots are. Okay, yeah, that one's all fully healthy. Very nice. So that is an example of good roots on it. I mean, there there's few roots. There's not a lot going on there, right? But they're healthy. You can see the color of them. They're clearly bright and alive. You know, they're green and white. Yeah, this one is looking really good. Okay, I'm running out of visas, you guys. I, I gotta go like thrift store shopping or something for plant uh, visas. Okay, so we're gonna be doing some maintenance on these roots. Um, let me go ahead and clear this moss away. So you saw what the healthy root systems look like, and then you can see the difference between what an unhealthy root system looks like. So here you can see this one all rotted from, well, this part up here is still firm, but down here, that is all rotted. So getting a plant with a bad root system can happen anywhere, whether you're ordering plants online or from a local nursery or Lowe's or Home Depot. So it's just a part of growing plants. And I, I promise that although at the time when you're dealing with plants that have root rot, it totally sucks and you are worried about losing the plant, but at the same time, you learn so much with every challenge that you have with plants. So it's definitely part of the process. And every time you have to deal with some sort of challenge, you learn a lot when it comes to caring for them. So I'm gonna start with this bunch of roots right here. And I'm just gonna go right to the top here. I'm gonna snip right at the base here because that whole thing was rotted. What we don't want is the, the rot to go into the stem. So like this is a good example here. If I can get in close, I, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that, but it's right here and it goes right, the rot goes right up to the stem. So I'm just gonna grab that and pull it straight out. And also that it has another rotted one right next to it too. So actually I'm just gonna start by snipping down low here and just see what that looks like in there and yeah. We're gonna take that whole root piece out. This one here, it's got white down here, but then up at the base is what you really wanna look for. So that is soft up there, so that one's gonna have to go too. I'm gonna snip it right next to the stem. Yep, that one is rotted. 
And if you haven't had to do this before, it can be kind of scary snipping off roots where it kind of looks like there's a mix of some healthy roots and then also on that same branch, there's also might be a little bit of rot. It's better to take out the whole thing um, if it has any rot at all because that will continue to spread. Like, look at that, you guys. Do you see that? That is like all rotted. Um, and it can be kind of tricky sometimes because you might feel, you might be only feeling for mush and then you go to feel and you're like, oh no, that's pretty firm. Maybe it's just a dirty root or something, you know? Or maybe it's just stained from the soil. Um, nope, that one is definitely like, even if it still feels firm, if it has like, when you look at it, you, you'll you kind of identify whether it looks to be alive or not, you know, and this is definitely a dead root here, even though it still has firmness up there. So we're just gonna get right up in there. And that one is coming straight down from the bottom. So we're just gonna snip that whole thing off. It's actually better to have hardly any roots left than to leave any amount of rot or any chance of a rotted root still attached to your plant. In some cases, you might need to just take a cutting. Um, on this particular plant, there's not really room to do a cutting because this is this is the chance that it has to live uh, down here at the node area and there's no new nodes yet. Okay, I'm just looking around the node here, just seeing where it still has chances to put out new roots. We're just gonna snip that one off. And then each each cut I do make, I check, I check to make sure it was a clean cut and make sure that the tissue, the root tissue is nice and white and healthy in there. I'm going to trim a little bit more. We're doing a heavy root prune on this, so there's not going to be much left. So this isn't going to go into soil anytime soon. I'm going to be rerooting this entirely in water, and then that way I can keep an eye on it and just make sure that no other root rot pops up on it. All right, our little baby is out of surgery. Root pruning is done, and that is what we're left with. Just basically two chunky little roots there. And I also did um, kind of scrape into, I did just a, a real short little trim on this part here, just because I wanted to see in there and make sure that part wasn't starting to rot inside because that's where most of the rotted roots, you know, were. And so, no, that is totally viable. It was nice and clean. It's kind of oxidizing a little bit now, but uh, when I made the cut, it was nice and clean. Okay, so here's what I do after a plant comes out of surgery. So we've got our plants, I've got a jar of water or a vase, and 3% hydrogen peroxide, and then my water. So what I'll do is just take a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, I'll just pour this in first just so you guys can see how much I use. And I don't measure it out, I just you know put like an inch in there. It doesn't need to be super strong um, because we only need a little bit for our roots. I just want the roots completely covered. So you could do like one part hydrogen peroxide to three parts water, something like that. Um, normally I find this works just fine. And then I just stick my plant in there, make sure the roots are completely submerged and um, not only the roots, but the stem anywhere that you have fresh cuts. And I'm gonna let this sit in the hydrogen peroxide solution for about 20 minutes or so. 20 to 30 minutes is fine. And then after it has a chance to sit for 20 to 30 minutes in the hydrogen peroxide solution, I dump that out and then I fill the jar with fresh, clean water. And then I'm just gonna keep an eye on it while it reroots. And so that's what I do to rehab plants that come in that have uh, any bit of root rot on there. And also clean your tools. So I'm just gonna take my rubbing alcohol. And then when I go to uh, pull these out again for any new cuts on plants, I do spray them again with rubbing alcohol. Um, you could always take a flame too if you really want to sterilize your tools really good. Take a flame and run that over the blade. You know what I just realized you guys with the peroxide solution? I think I said three parts water to one part peroxide. Actually, it's more like two parts water to one part peroxide. Uh, but it really doesn't matter as long as there is, you know, a decent amount of peroxide in there to help get it all bubbly. So so you'll see it's all bubbling in there and so you know it's going to help with the healing process of all those little cuts that we did on the roots and any open wounds that it has. Alright guys, I had to go charge my battery too so while the plants were soaking I was charging my battery and I made an ice blended coffee. It is coffee. Coffee. I decided to also trim up the plowmanii roots too a little bit. Like after you soak the plants in water, if you look at the roots again, sometimes you can then see some of the more translucent uh, roots that might be a little bit hard to spot that they're rotted when they're just dry. 
So letting them soak for a little while and then checking again, it was easier to spot uh, some of those more brown translucent uh, dead roots basically. Also, because I did trim the plowmanii roots, I did go ahead and do a hydrogen peroxide solution soak for that one too. So it's in there right now soaking and all, uh, all bubbly. Um, this one is all done. So I'm just gonna pull that one out and go refresh its water. So I'll dump out the solution. Okay, so I've got the fresh water. I'm just gonna put the pasta sanum in there. So I'll be looking for two things over the next few weeks here. I'll look for new root growth and then also watch that new leaf that's coming in and see if it comes out okay or if it dies back. It, it could go either way. So we're just gonna see how it goes. So yeah, after you do your best, pretty much all you can do from there is just try to keep the plant as comfortable as possible, you know, keep the temperature right. I keep it uh, at least 50% humidity in this room. So normally it's between 50 and 60%. If I have a plant that is particularly sensitive and really needs higher humidity, I just move it closer to the humidifier. So even though we had to trim off some root rot on the pasta zanum, overall I'm really happy with my order. So I think that um, I'm, I'm pretty excited about these. They're going to be really fun to grow and to rehab, take care of, you know. You learn so much when you have to rehab plants, you know, but um, yeah, I think it'll be okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's gonna it's gonna pull through just fine, that pasta zanum. And uh, the plowmanii, Yep, so we're, we're just gonna keep an eye on all of these. So I wanted to do the unboxing and that way I'll have this footage and I'll be able to do an update with you guys later on on how the plants are doing, if they pulled through, if they rehabbed okay. All right guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me in the plant room today and I will see you in the next video. Next video is either gonna be potting these guys up or, or it's gonna be organizing the plant room because I'm doing both today and tomorrow. So I don't know what video is gonna come first, but I hope to see you in the next one. All right guys, love you, have an awesome day, bye.